You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This episode is about win-win negotiation. I've done one previous podcast on negotiation during the uh, entrepreneurship series that I did ages ago, but I wanted to come back to it because it's so important and such a fundamental part of all voluntary relationships. The only way we can get what we want in voluntary relationships is by negotiating. So we're all negotiating all the time in, in business, in our personal lives. So I'm really, really interested in the subject and I want to share some of the most useful things that I've learned from what I've read about it and also just from my experiences in trying to be a better negotiator. I'm going to split this up into a number of episodes because there's a few different aspects that I'd like to cover. There are some principles to win-win negotiation, which when I really understood them, they just blew my mind because they're really, really powerful. And when you understand them you can really do ninja moves in negotiation. So I definitely want to talk about that. But that's going to be uh, another episode. Before that, I want to talk about communication and productive communication in in particular. Because this is one aspect of negotiation that I always found some of the business-oriented books about negotiation to be a bit superficial when they talk about the sort of people side of the negotiation All the business negotiation books mention how important the people's side of any negotiation is, but they tend to not really say that much about it. And some of the most useful things that I've learned about communication skills in negotiation have actually come from psychology books. So what I want to do in this episode is just uh, give you some pointers to some of the resources that I've found useful and some of the key ideas from these books and, you know, you, if you're interested, you can go and find out more about them yourself. But hopefully also this podcast will give you a bit of an overview to get you going. So first of all, as a bit of background, let's just look at why it is that communication is so important in negotiation. How you relate to others is just as important as what it is that you're actually negotiating. And one of the reasons for this is that when you're negotiating... There are always two negotiations going on at the same time. One is the subject matter of what you're negotiating. And the other negotiation is the rules of how you negotiate. So there's what you're talking about and there's how you talk about it. And the negotiation about how to negotiate is tricky because it's often unspoken. It is often based on common assumptions cultural precedents, and a lot of unconscious stuff. So I found that it can be quite hard to understand what is going wrong with the negotiation if you're not conscious about both the two types of negotiation that are happening at the same time. So the first thing that I found really helpful is whenever there's a difficulty in reaching an agreement is to step back and stop talking about the problem or arguing about the problem and actually try and explicitly agree on how you're going to talk about it. For example, if you and the person you're negotiating with keep talking over each other and are not listening to each other, then you're never going to move forward in the negotiation until you can actually agree the principle that each person needs to be given a chance to talk and the other person needs to listen to them without interrupting them so that you can actually get to say whatever it is you want to say and listen to each other. I find it really hard in the heat of the moment to be conscious of the fact that there are two negotiations going on at the same time, but it's always really helpful to go back to getting agreement on how to talk about something first before you try and solve the individual details of the negotiation. I find that really helpful. And that insight comes from a book on negotiation called Getting to Yes by Fisher and Yuri, and I'll put links in the show notes to all of the uh, books that I talk about in this podcast. The next uh, aspect of communication is empathy. This is so crucial because win-win negotiation always depends on understanding the interests of the other person. 
that's the whole idea behind win-win negotiation is you and the other person are both going to come out of the negotiation having your interests met. And in order for that to happen, you have to understand what it is that the other person wants, what their interests are, not the specific positions that they're putting forward, but what the interests behind those positions are. And the only way to understand that is to empathize with the person and to really be able to see the problems from from their viewpoint to understand where they're coming from. That doesn't mean sympathizing with them. It doesn't mean you have to agree with what it is that they that they think and feel, but you definitely have to understand it and be able to empathize with it. And the technique that I found most useful for really empathizing with another person in negotiation is called active listening. You can look that up on Wikipedia and I'll put some links in the uh, in the show notes, but the basic point with active listening is that you suspend any issues of whether or not you agree or disagree and you focus on listening to the other person. So even if you find what they're saying difficult to hear, the idea is to listen to what they're saying and make sure that you're able to understand everything that they've said and even sort of repeat it back to them in your own words in a way that they feel is a fair representation of what they've been saying. And it's a really, really good exercise because it feels to the other person, you know, to be truly listened to, it feels like a gift. It's a really good way of, of sort of getting a negotiation into a better mood if you like but um it's not only that it's also incredibly helpful for you to listen because it's that's how you get to understand what the other person's interests are in the negotiation and what they're really what is behind what it is that they that they want so active listening is a really really helpful communication method the next aspect of communication that i find really uh, helpful to focus on is the style of communication and particularly for for when you are having a productive negotiation the style of communication you need is peer to peer and what that means is having a conversation or a communication style where you're dealing as one equal to another equal and it's like an adult to adult style of communication so nobody is putting themselves in a more higher higher position or lower position but you're simply negotiating as a sort of peer-to-peer and what that means is that there's no undertones and specifically sort of hidden psychological undertones you can feel when there are undertones in the style of communication it's it happens when you feel like you're being spoken to as if you're a child you know the other person is saying something that on the surface sounds uh straightforward but somehow they, they're saying it in a way that maybe is slightly chastising you or treating you as if you're a kid. And that's one way it can, can work. The other way it can, can work is that they actually treat you, they actually behave like a kid themselves. They treat you like an unfair parent and they, they behave like a child in the way that they communicate towards you. And whenever you get into that kind of imbalanced communication where you or the other person are treating each other in any style that isn't straightforward, equal to equal, that just totally derails productive communication. There's a very good book about this called Games People Play by a psychologist called Eric Byrne. And he outlines a lot of different ways that this can happen. So um, one example is a game called Yes But, where somebody will supposedly be talking through a problem with you and you will make a suggestion and they will say yeah but the problem is i can't do that because x y and z and then you'll make another suggestion and they'll say yeah but and that is a game it's ostensibly it looks like equal to equal communication but the other person is sort of cast in the role of a child who who can't follow through on any of these suggestions and you're cast in the role of a parent trying to be helpful, trying to come up with all these solutions. So that's one example of a, of a kind of psychological game. And basically what you have to do is get back to peer-to-peer equal communication. Uh, Eric Byrne gives lots of different examples of the ways that you can do that and get out of the game playing and get back to peer-to-peer communication. And sometimes it helps to just address what's going on and get it all out on the table so that you can talk about it. And sometimes it's best to not engage when someone's trying to pull you into uh, a game. But I, I recommend reading that book because I think it's quite interesting to, to understand those dynamics. Having adult-to-adult, peer-to-peer or equal 
communication doesn't mean that you have to sort of express yourself in bland, monotone ways and that you can't express your feelings. You can totally talk about how you feel, but the, the whole idea is if you express your feelings, you're doing it as a matter of fact, just as a matter of disclosing what's going on for you as an authentic person. You're not doing it as a ploy. You're not doing it to try and manipulate the other person. And the only other thing I would say about expressing your feelings is the issue of escalation. So although it's totally peer-to-peer -peer just to express how you're feeling and be authentic, it changes the dynamic if feelings start to escalate by one person playing off another. So for example, if one person feels angry and starts talking about their anger and the other person feels angry in response to their anger and starts talking about that, and then that makes the first person feel even angrier, then that's escalation. You can't control what you feel, but you can control the level to which you let the negotiation escalate. And there's lots of ways that you can de-escalate, the simplest of which is just taking a break if you need to. But the other way uh, is to go back to active listening so that one person says everything that's on their mind and the other person doesn't interrupt them, listens through, and then it's their turn to express and have the other person listen to them. And I find that that's a very helpful way of getting back to peer-to-peer -peer communication when feelings are starting to get escalated. The last suggestion that I have for um, productive communication is the style of communication where you speak for yourself and not about the other person. And there's a technique for this that um, the psychologist Thomas Gordon talks about. And again, I'll put links to this. The technique is called eye messages. And the idea is that you always speak about what you want and how you feel and not about what the other person is doing or what they think and they feel. It's so tempting in a negotiation to say, you are being unreasonable, you are making me do X, Y, and Z, you've done this, you've done that. And that totally derails productive communication. You can express how you feel, even if you feel upset about something, by using I messages, just by saying, I don't like that, I'm not happy about this, I don't want that. What that does is it, it stops the communication from being one of you've done this, you've done that, and it pulls it back to each person talking about what their needs are and what their interests are. And that is super productive. Even if you disagree, that's really productive communication. I always find that if I stick to iMessages, then the communication goes much, much better. And when I don't, when I start talking about what the other person's doing, that's when the communication tends to break down. People get defensive and you lose any productivity in the negotiation. Another aspect of speaking for yourself is to frame things in terms of requests and not demands. So if you're talking about getting your needs met, then you're talking about requesting things from the other person in order to get your needs met, which is very different from talking about what the other person should do or framing it in terms of how they need to change. And the book Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg has some good examples about how to frame things in terms of requests. So that's another resource that you might want to check out. So those are just some of the ideas that I've found helpful in terms of keeping communication productive and positive in win-win negotiation. As I said, I think the business books uh, about negotiation often go straight into the hardcore principles and tend to gloss over a little bit these interpersonal communication questions. But if you can't communicate productively, you're never going to be able to negotiate productively. So I hope that's helpful. Having covered the communication side, I do also want to talk about some ninja moves in negotiation itself and I will do that in a future episode I'd love to hear what you think if you have any thoughts about this episode please do comment or get in touch and if you have a chance to leave a review on iTunes that would be really helpful I'd really appreciate it thanks so much for listening thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life if you have feedback about the show please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com if you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.